No? What? Why not? I don't want to wash. Oh my goodness. What? Have you eaten your breakfast? Oh yes, of course I have. <sighs> well listen, you've got to get changed. Why? Well, you were supposed to be leading the first song today. Oh, was I? What was it? Jesus is my saviour, Jesus is my friend. Oh, I like that one. Well, you better get dressed then. OK, bye bye. Well, that's a bit better. I'm glad you're back. Right, are you ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like this one. <laughs> Sorry, a bit. Sorry about that. A bit, uh, a bit different. Jesus is my saviour. Jesus is my friend. On the way to school. Hmm. Let's pray that God goes with all of our children and young people and their teachers and all the other staff as they go back to school tomorrow for many of them. We're going to say a little a prayer now. And uh, part of this prayer, there will be bits for you to join in with. It's a prayer that I say most morning. But before we do that, let's just praise God. For, for who he is. Psalm 34 was in my Bible readings this morning and it said this, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh Lord God, we bless you. Our lips will praise you. Our souls will enjoy you and glorify you for you have been good to us. So Lord God, we worship you and we praise you on this Sunday morning. And we pray that you might draw near to us, even as we learn to draw near to you. Amen. So every morning, uh, I pretty much pray this prayer and I invite you muted as you are, but to pray it along with me. Christ, as a light, illumine and guide me, light me up. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and on my right. O Lord, today be within and without me. Even though you are lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me. Although you are lowly and meek, you are all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and on my right. I invite you just to think about that, wherever you are now, in all our different places, Christ beside us, on our left and our right, within us, and all always surrounding us with love. Oh Lord God, we worship you and we praise you. 
And so we pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. So I do want to welcome you all here today and actually to say to you, uh, just as we go on, whoops, my second screen is falling over as I speak. That was not what I wanted. Um, uh, just to say to you that uh, ooh, I'm trying to find Zoe keeps moving. I'm, we, we, we are finishing our service today with uh, communion. And I, before we do that, though, I want to meet a few friends. I'm trying to find uh, where is where are the Colchins? I can't find. Is oh, that is that JC Leo the cool guy? God oh, dear, if it wasn't such a that's who I'm looking for. JC Leo the cool guy. If you guys could unmute yourself, and uh, we're going to hear a bit more about our daily routines. Let me just get back onto a slightly better screen. Right. So there we are. So I've got these, uh, well, I've got Zoe and the Colchins. And what I thought I'd do, let's let's start with, let's start with, actually, we can't help but start with some of the Colchins. So let's hear a little bit about your morning routines, please. Go on then. Uh, we'll go, should we go for Toby first? Because you won't get a look in otherwise, Toby. Go on. Oh, we'll go, I'll go for Kate then. Go on, I'll go for Kate. Okay, so I um, have a shower, get dressed, um, have a cup of tea and then have breakfast. All right, so it's shower, mm -hmm. wash, dress, food. Yes. Okay. Wash, dress, food in that order. What about you, Toby? What's your order? Uh, food, get dressed and clean my teeth. Yeah. Food, get dressed and do you actually wash? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you're a bit like hank or yeah the food comes first as with hank yeah okay leo the cool guy what about you um i um i um wake up and then uh go downstairs to watch some tv and then uh get dressed and then play with my lego so you don't eat breakfast <laughs> Um, that's all after that. You eat breakfast last? Uh-huh. And what about washing, Leo? Uh, I do that at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so one wash at night is good, is good to go. Yeah. I mean, as Paul is in there as well, should we include Paul? Paul, do you wash? Yeah, I do. First thing in the morning. <laughs> and which comes first, food or, food or washing? Washing first. Then I think uh, <laughs> work comes after that. Yeah. Daddy just goes to work. Nothing else. It's Hi. only work. Okay, right. I'm going to hand over to hand over to Zoe then. So, what's Zoe's order? Okay, I feel a bit cheeky talking about this today because I'm only here by a hair's breadth. The routine almost didn't happen in time because I am knackered. <laughs> but <clears throat> let's assume it all goes to plan every day. I'm. I get up. I get washed. I get dressed. Then I get Anna up and dressed. And then we have breakfast as a prize for doing all of the above. Eyes on the prize. But um, tomorrow, obviously, I'm sending Anna back to school. And I've got this in my head that if I find the golden routine, then the mornings will be really easy. So often I'll muck it up and I'll, I'll write out a new routine. I'll be like, today we're going to do breakfast and then dress and then wash. No, we're going to mess it up. We're going to wash and then have breakfast and then we're going to dress in the hope that I'll find this magic set of, of ways of doing things that means the school run is easy, but I haven't found it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Like, and actually, on, on, on the call today, and even watching uh, with us on YouTube, um, Nick, I hope uh, you have actually started the YouTube stream. I hope so. Um, 
we've all got different routines and i think as our lives change different routines happen i was struck this morning uh reading the sort of daily devotions glasses actually the reality is the reality is for me my my first thing is to put my glasses on and actually without that i literally be walking into walls it's quite funny this morning i went down to feed my dog and she picked up she's got an old uh it's a little sort of stable that she it's a sort of cloth stable that she's playing with as her toy at the moment before she wrecks it she put it on her face and she couldn't get it off and she walked straight into the wall it was if i could have had that on video i'd have been a rich man it was absolutely classic she just had she was sort of trying to get it off bang straight into the wall because she couldn't see so yeah our, my, for me my glasses but i'm with you know the uh, to me dressing i really don't want to dress that's my last thing i want to do in life and actually that's the way i'm going to look at it today that we put e eating first then washing then dressing that's the only way as far as i'm concerned but anyway let's um uh what do we do it's the first of the month it's the first sunday of the month so let me um let me see if i can uh, how do i do this remove spotlight and remove spotlight so we are now going to do the birthday song and uh, if it is your birthday in March, could you put it on the chat? And everyone else, look at that chat. Make sure you send a card or some chocolates because Zion believes in giving chocolates for birthdays. So let's make sure that actually online church is even better because we get more chocolates given by one another. So have a little think about that as we do the birthday song uh, all together. And uh, yeah, please do, please do put that on the chat and we'll look at that at the end. There you go, the birthday, the wonderful Zion birthday song okay right uh let's have a look on the chat we've got some we've got some chat joshua grandma and mummy uh pam pitt who else have we got mel reed stevie as in stevie and dan so that's mummy so who is going to give the chocolate from mummy that's a really important thing leslie i was going to say leslie durston but it's not it's leslie brown i think uh, Joyce, yes, she's had a birthday. I don't know if she's still allowed chocolate. Um, Leo uh, and Katrine and Xavier. Xavier is very keen that we all know that it's him. And Leo indeed has said it several times. So there you go. And uh, other people starting their routines different ways. So it's uh, it's that time of, uh, of year. Oh, sorry, there's no picture of me. Anyway, we don't need a picture of me. Let's hand over to Joyce and she is going to share with us the notices and the family news. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I've lost the notices. That's terrible, isn't it? Mm. Ah, here they are on a different screen. Can you still hear me? Yes, I hope so. Uh, if you'd Joyce like to say mine was a big one i didn't know you were 80 joyce <laughs> yeah yeah I i'm heading that way now stephen <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah heading that way and, and i've just seen miriam and richard and caroline burgess as well so lots of chocolates to be distributed peeps can you hear me uh, yes i think so oh that's okay i have to do this in a different way today Right, the prayer ministry team today are Helen, Jane, Mary and Wendy. If you'd like prayer ministry, please let Nick know in the chat and he'll put you in a breakout room with a couple of the prayer ministry team after the service. Catherine, as usual, did a brilliant job with the notice sheet this week. Uh, a couple of things to look out for is there's a, a lot of message from Tradecraft. They've got some bargains and some information about possibly um, sending orders again. And thanks very much to Eric Bray, who's been doing a, a quiz for over a year now, but his last one will be on the 17th of March. Thank you so much, Eric. They've been such fun during lockdown. 
So let's see if we can have a big turnout for the 17th of March. And even now, let's unclap and mute ourselves. And you know, we we can we can clap for carers, we can slow hand clap for one percent payroll, but we can certainly clap for Eric. Clap for Eric. Right, then we have some family news. We pray for Sheila Smith's family. Sheila died peacefully on Thursday morning at Warmley House. We also pray for Sam and his family. Sam's granddad died last weekend. We pray for all those who are ill, especially Jean, who has been told she has cancer and Annabelle, who has had her heart operation. We also pray for Kath and Bert as Bert comes home from hospital today. And I would like to add prayers to all those families whose children are going back to school, both for the parents and for the children themselves. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Um, I can't remember if I told you, but the end of our service today is with is going to conclude with communion. So uh, you might want to uh, find just find some bread and uh, a cup that you can share so that we can share together at the close of our service. OK, well, it was really good to hear some of those family routines. And one of the routines that we have is that our young people go into their groups. So Junior Church and RS2, we pray God's blessing on you. And we pray that you have a good time uh, and uh, as you share together. So I think Nick is going to send you to those groups. Uh, and while that's happening, I'm going to we're going to listen to a wonderful piece of music about the, the rhythm of the day from Stuart Townend. Uh, it's called The Book of Hours. Quite a beautiful, beautiful song. <laughs> Start again. Team. 
teach me the wisdom of remembering and give me the wisdom to forget me, me. Oh, teach me to live each day for you. Christ be with Absolutely love that song, and uh, Nick, I think it was that actually introduced me to it. So thank you for that. And uh, it is available on YouTube if you just look up Stuart Townend and Book of Hours. And you know, perhaps some of us think, oh, I find prayer really difficult. Well, I think that in itself, that song is a a really good aid aid to prayer. So I hope that you might find that that useful. We're going to um, pray now. Uh, very appropriately and um, Mary is going to lead us uh, in our prayers for others so I'm going to hand over to Mary now. Father as we come to you in prayer we ask you to still our troubled hearts and minds help us to hear your promptings as the concerns of this community are held before you individual personal worries as well as issues facing our wider world. Many of us are very aware that the schools will be fully reopening during this coming week, following their prolonged closure. For some, this will bring relief or even excitement. For others, it may be the source of great anxiety. So, we pray for all who will be affected in any way by this major change the pupils, the teachers, the support staff, as well as all the families involved. We pray that your peace, that peace which passes all understanding, will encourage and reassure each one of them. Many in our community have lost loved ones in recent weeks, so we pray that you will be close to all those who are sad and lonely at this time. We think especially of Sheila Smith's family and ask you to comfort them all. We give thanks for Sheila's long life and the memories she leaves behind. Some of our congregation, or known to us, are very unwell. We especially remember Bert May, Brenda Smythe and Pat Spry. And we give thanks that Annabelle Dark's surgery went well last week. We thank you too that many of us have now had our first vaccination against COVID. We are so grateful for the invaluable work done by scientists and researchers alongside all those working in healthcare. We ask you to strengthen, support and refresh all those working so hard in hospitals, surgeries and care homes. And we pray your blessing on all in their care. The COVID pandemic has also taken its toll financially, as this week's budget reminded us. We lift to you all who are struggling in poverty at this time, and we ask your guidance and wisdom for all those tasked with making financial decisions affecting so many. We pray your blessing on the latest local ecumenical initiative, Comfort and Joy. Please help those who are able to give generous support, remembering that all our good gifts come initially as a result of your great generosity. Beyond our local community, we think of those facing hardship much further afield. We remember the people of Yemen, of Syria and of Myanmar, 
to name but a few, as they face the challenges of war, of sickness, of hunger, and of extreme poverty, we ask you to look on their plight with compassion and to bring relief to their suffering. Guide our own prayers and our attempts to offer support to those with needs greater than our own as we listen to your promptings. We pray that your peace may be restored in these troubled lands, bringing new health and prosperity. We pray too for the restoration of our beautiful earth, so badly damaged by the selfishness, ignorance and greed of mankind. I want to conclude my prayers with some lines of poetry quoted at a recent Christian conference. Perhaps in all this crisis, all this pain, this reassessment of our loss and gain, nature rebukes our brief authority, yet offers us the chance to start again. And this time, with a new humility, with chastened awe and mutual courtesy, to re-accept the unearned gifts of life with gratitude, with joy and charity. Perhaps we'll learn to live without so much, to nurture and to cherish, not to clutch. And if we're spared, we'll hold the years we're given with gentle tenure and a lighter touch. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mary. Um, OK, if I could ask uh, Pete uh, and Neil to unmute themselves and, of course, the rest of you to find your Bibles, which are always right beside you, always able for us to us to look at. We're going to read uh, two readings, first from Psalm 92 and then if you like, the beginning of Jesus's ministry from Mark chapter one. So I think it's Pete to start with these first verses from Psalm 92, and then we will, we will go from there. Thanks very much. Psalm 92, a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning, and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For your deeds make me glad, for, me, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. Uh, I sing be, for joy. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. I couldn't quite see it. Sorry about that. Amen. Uh, and then over to uh, Eliel. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. Senseless people do not know. Fools do not understand. That the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish. They will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. Thanks be to God. And uh, now I've asked Jean if Jean would unmute herself. And uh, she is going to read from Mark chapter one. Mark one. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. At once, the spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, 
follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently. Sorry, I can't read the next bit. And came out of him with a shriek. With a shriek. Sorry. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Amen. Thank you uh, to Peter, Neil, uh, sorry, Eliel and, uh, and Jean. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's pray before we continue. Almighty God, I pray now that as I share some thoughts from your word, but how we might eat, wash, clothe ourselves, May we learn from you a rhythm and a routine which both brings your peace in our hearts but also makes it really true that your kingdom is among us, is near us and we might see that in the things that we are part of. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, that is uh, what I want to talk about today. <clears throat> Eat, wash and dress. Simple, really. Actually, I should have included put your glasses on as well, because there'd certainly be no sermon if I didn't have mine on. Um, yeah, to, to think about the daily rhythms of life and particularly how we bring God into those things. The Lent course that we are, that we are looking at is actually... Uh, it's doing the same thing as that, really. To th I'm thinking about our daily routine whereas the and bringing God into that, whereas the Lent course is thinking about the things, very ordinary earthly things and how we might learn from them. So we've had the toilet, the shower, the bath, spectacles, our teeth, toothbrush, uh, all, all this in these last few days. Uh, and so I've got a couple of services in Lent and I thought I would look at our morning routine today and then perhaps our evening routine in a couple of weeks time to see how these things can help us to stay closer to God. So today I want to think about our waking up and then eat, wash and dress. Now, I do argue that we need to learn from Jesus's routine. And in all honesty, we don't know Jesus's routine for sure. But I think as we look at the start of his ministry, we can catch a glimpse of the way that particularly prayer and time with God was the starting point of both his day, but also of his, of his life. His ministry started with a prolonged time simply to be with God. It's where the 40 days of Lent came from. Jesus went out just to be on his own after his baptism to be with God. We might even go back before that and remember his childhood and that very strange 
temple visit. There's no doubt Jesus enjoyed being with his father. Now, in terms of that first 40 days, Mark records this most simply. He was out in the wilderness. There were wild animals and angels. He was facing temptations from Satan, the tempter. To actually see what those temptations were, we need to look in either Matthew or Luke. Well, just to take from Luke, uh, let's go on. Yeah, the tempter, whoops, it's tricky doing all these things. Uh, there we go, the temptations. Um, what were Jesus' temptations? Well, Luke 4 outlines those, and I encourage you to read Luke 4. It's a wonderful, wonderful chapter of scripture. The first temptation that Jesus had was for food. Well, I totally get that because, you know, <laughs> that's that's my starting point pretty much always. Uh, I could say, you know, I, I, I married Debbie because she's gentle, she, but she's also a fabulous cook, let me say that. <laughs> so all of those things. Food, definitely my temptation. But what was, what was Jesus's temptation? His temptation was to look beyond what God had provided. I mean, to be honest with you, one might argue that that is absolutely fair enough because, you know, he hadn't eaten for 40 days. And Luke records quite simply, he was hungry. God, dear, don't call you bullet for nothing, do they? But the temptation was for Jesus to eat the wrong food. Think about that for you. Is there a temptation for you to eat the wrong food, food that God hasn't given for you? The second temptation uh, that, uh, that uh, Luke records is was the temptation to worship the wrong thing, particularly to worship Jesus in order to get what he wanted to be the Lord of, of, of the world, if you like, was what the temptation that Satan was giving him. There was the temptation to, to worship the wrong thing. Please do look at Luke 4 to see the way that Jesus refuted this. And I believe this is the temptation to sin that we all face. To love and to want the wrong thing or the wrong things. What are you tempted to worship that you really shouldn't be? So that was the second temptation that Jesus faced. The third temptation was to be the wrong person. Very interesting, this third one. It was a, a test to test God is the way uh, Luke records it. But it was to question his identity. Will God really save you? And so the temptation was to throw his life away and see if God would protect him. Well, of course, we know that that is what happened in the end. But this was the temptation to do it in the wrong way, to do it with power rather than to become the merciful Messiah. So this time that Jesus started his ministry was to want the wrong food, to want the wrong things, to be the wrong person. So that's how he started his ministry, if you like. So his ministry begins. Jesus' day is upon us. But how does he start uh, this uh, ministry? He proclaims the kingdom of God. He invites people back to that kingdom. And so people follow him. And you've got that wonderful uh, <clears throat> episode in Mark that we just heard of the, the, the fishermen following them, following him. And he teaches them. Now, this leads to opportunities for healing and indeed for confronting the evil. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. So this activity leads to opportunities for healing and then confronting the evil that holds us all in captivity. Now, I would describe that action, particularly the way Mark records it as Jesus having a pretty busy day. And yet what happens next? Whoops. <clears throat> Jesus, it's verse 35, is probably my least favourite verse in the Bible. 
Very early in the morning, Jesus got up to pray. Jesus was busy. Uh, the reason it's my least favourite verse is because I am not a morning person. I'm getting different, better, but I'm not that. But even though Jesus had all this busyness, he gets up early and goes to be alone with God. Now, if I had a penny for every member of the church that has ever said to me, oh, I'm too busy to pray, I'd be, I'd probably have at least a quid. So many of us, though, we say that. We say we're too busy to, to pray, and it's really sad. We might be prepared to say, as I guess we all do here on this call, because we're here at church, if you like. We might say we've left our nets to follow Jesus, but too few of us change the pattern of our lives to put prayer right at the beginning. There is nothing else, really. Prayer is at the beginning. So, how does Jesus start his ministry? How does he start his day? It is prayer. And I wonder if we can say the same. I know for me that's uh, certainly a struggle sometimes, but I try and work at it. I do say it's my job, so it's probably easier for me than for others. <clears throat> okay, so what's, what's to be done about this? What's to be done about it? Well, I believe the answer is to learn from Jesus, to be those followers that we claim to be. And what did Jesus do? He brought everything, faced everything with God. So I want to encourage you this Lent to look at your daily, your ordinary life, and to invite God into your routines. And so, in the morning, to feed on God. Jesus, we're told, was hungry. Are you hungry? I'll be honest, I think breakfast is probably my favourite meal, although I like all of them, let's be honest. <laughs> but as we think of morning breakfast, how about adding the thought of how will I feed on God today? Not just will I have my Cheerios or my Shreddies, but what am I going to do today to feed on God? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? I believe we can feed on God by enjoying his creation. It's pretty easy at this time of year, the, the, the snowdrops and all the flowers beginning to come in, buds on the trees. It's easy to feed on God in that way. And I encourage us to carry on doing it, to listen for the bird songs, to open our eyes to the, to the glory of the Lord, if you like. But I don't think it needs to be uh, just about creation. I think we also need to feed on our creator to enjoy him. The reason I, I chose the psalm was uh, for that verse. It is good to praise the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning, your faithfulness at night. We don't live because we eat breakfast. We, we live when we feed on the word from God. So think about that, the creation, but then go beyond that to the creator and praise him. And yes, I'm of the school that says we need to be feeding on God's word. God gave us breakfast, if you like. God gave us food that we can chew on. Of course, we have communion later. We will literally in, literally, now we're going to get into a massive theological argument with that one word, literally, but we won't go there. But we can feed on God in our heart as we take the bread and the cup. But for you, when will you listen to God's word today, each day? It's never been easier. You know, we think of Christians around the world and we're still producing Bibles for people who haven't got, got Bibles. I've got a Bible on this. I've got a Bible on my phone. I've got I can probably see about six Bibles around me at this point. I can look for the Bible on the internet. I can even, I was about to say the word Alexa, but if I did, then something's going to go off in the other room. I can say to these mad devices that we've got, apparently I can say, Alexa, read the URC daily podcast and my Bible reading will come up from that machine. It's never been easier. You can do it in the car, so long as you've got your eyes on the road. But will you feed? 
it's there that each of us has to make that choice to feed on God. I start my day with food. I don't care about washing or dressing. <laughs> I need to eat. But do we start our day feeding on God? Uh, I love this little picture there of the uh, the invention of the shower. Uh, as, a, as a keen cyclist, I couldn't resist that one. And it was in the Lent course, the, the idea. So I thought I'd, I'd add that little one there. So after feeding, washing ourselves, uh, the Lent objects this week were about showers, baths, toilets. It's a bit like reading the Bible. It's easier now to wash than it's ever been. Most of us have hot running water, showers, sink, soap to wash our hands. Even nowadays, hand gel, sanitizer when we're out. There's no excuse not to be clean anymore. And yet, in truth, most of us still stink. Don't get me wrong. I know you've washed. I know you are clean as I am on the outside. But when Jesus was tempted to worship the devil, he was fighting the temptation on the inside to lust after the wrong things, to adore the wrong things, to fester the wrong thoughts, the prejudices, the anger, the hurts, the lusts, yes. I ask you, do you have a daily routine of repentance, of asking God to wash you so that you can be truly clean, not just on the outside, but in your hearts? Wash yourself. One of the Lent readings was about our treasure. And I read this and I think I didn't think I had any really treasure. I mean, as I thought this, I... Uh, I needed Debbie to remind me of my infatuation with bikes and guitars and goodness only knows what else. Anyway, as I read it, I genuinely thought to myself, I don't treasure the wrong things. I went out for a walk and I took with me my favourite pen. I needed to sign something for someone. And on the way, my pen must have fallen from my pocket. And even though I've scoured the area on several occasions, it's gone. And my reaction, oh, pathetic. I never realised I could worship a pen. I mean, it was a nice pen. It had been given to me as a gift. But it's just a pen. Worship the Lord your God and him only. If we are to be clean on the inside, washed daily, we need to examine our hearts. We can't be clean and worship created things, however nice they are. So I invite you, while you wash the outside of your body, invite God again to examine your heart. Maybe I did do that and I didn't listen. And so Jesus needed to teach me. So I lost my pen. And I ask God to cleanse me of all the other ridiculous fantasies that I treasure and worship. Worship God. Proclaim his love in the morning and his faithfulness at night, as the psalmist tells us. So finally, clothe yourself. We've eaten. We've repented and washed. What about getting dressed? What are the clothes <clears throat> that you are going to wear? Who are you going to pretend to be? There is a great temptation to be other than who we are. And even Jesus faced that temptation. No, no, he said. The way of the cross, yes. But Jesus said no to the idea of a strong, powerful one who God will come and sort of rescue and that physicality of the Messiah. That is what the many of us are looking for. But Jesus' strength is made perfect in weakness. I believe that you and Christ are awesome. And one of the problems is that we are trying to be who we are not. And that is actually putting God to the test. Did God really make me? Re Lord, you can't really make anything of me. 
and yet as we dress each day to prepare ourselves to live out that day, it is an incredible opportunity. If you and I will accept that God loves us as even more beautiful than the lilies of the field, even though we are equally broken and fragile, an incredible day is possible. I've written down here, you and Christ are awesome if we will clothe ourselves in him. On Alpha recently, one of the uh, people that was there said, wow, I didn't realise Christianity was about having a relationship with God. But that's what it is. As we realise that we are hungry, as we acknowledge our weakness and our foolishness, he says, I know, but I've got good news. The kingdom of God is near. Now, this kingdom means, well, basically everything. But one thing that it means is that you, that we are included. We're invited. God wants to be a part of your every day. All you need to do to make this happen is to clothe yourself with Christ, to, to literally put on Jesus. You might think of that as well as putting on the, the, the spiritual armour, but I, I prefer just the idea of put on Jesus. The New Living Translation of, of Romans 13, 14 says this, Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. I think the, uh, the message version puts it even better, if you like, or differently. Romans 13, verse 11 to 14. Make sure you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-by-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute, must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity, and indulgence, in sleeping around and dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourself in Christ and be up and about. I love that. Dress yourself in Christ and be up and about. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're now going to sing, and I invite you to sing, River, River, wash over me.
And so we come now to our time of sharing communion together. And it is an invitation from Jesus. With Jesus, you are awesome. So will you feed on him? Will you confess your need of him? Will you clothe yourselves with him? Perhaps we've got a number of places where there are responses now in these prayers. And I know it sounds a bit garbled sometimes over Zoom and then onto YouTube. But in reality, we are the people of God together. So if your birthday's in March and you'd like to, to join in with these, these uh, areas of responses, please do unmute yourself mm -hmm. as we go through um, these times. So we say together, Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, we do Lord, not we presume do not to come, come to this to table, table, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your mercy, mercy and love, love, you have called, you have called us, us, healed, healed us, us, forgiven, forgiven us. us. Our hearts, our hearts are full of, of praise. praise. We, we receive, receive your love. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you all to give your bodies <coughs> to God. Because of all that he has done for you, let them become a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way that we worship him. And so I invite you to take a moment now to worship, to praise God in your heart. I invite you simply to say the name, to proclaim Jesus Christ as your Lord on your lips and to invite the Holy Spirit to come to refresh you with his love. Lord God, we worship you. The Lord is here. His Spirit, his spirit is with us. Let us give thanks us... to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, give to give him thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Lord, it is indeed right, our joy, our delight to praise you. For you are the beginning, the author of all goodness and light. All creation sings your praise. And we are invited to join our hearts in thanksgiving and praise. Lord God, you are the radiance of heaven. You are the light of our salvation, and we simply give you thanks and praise. And here at this table, we recognise Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who was promised of old, the one who comes to be our Redeemer. Even though so often the world has spurned him and forgotten to worship, yet his love remains new every morning, he will not abandon us. So we pray. Almighty God, Almighty God with joy, with we, joy we give thanks for all, for all those who have reminded us and encouraged, and encouraged us in love. For the prophets, for the prophets and, apostles, and apostles, for our, our teachers, teachers families, families, families and friends, and friends who have demonstrated Amen. But most of all, Almighty God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. At just the right time, he came, Lord of eternity, yet born in humility. He is the fulfillment of the Father's will, the very fullness of the one who fills everything. He is Alpha, he is Alpha and, and Omega, the beginning, the beginning and, and the, the end, end. The, king the King of Kings, kings and Lord of Lords. 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 So we offer you our praises with all your people here on earth and indeed with that whole company of heaven, some of our members who are newly among that company and yet we join with them to proclaim your greatness and to sing your praise. 
Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna Hosanna in in the the highest. Blessed Blessed is he he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, as we prepare to receive, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is is risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. So now take a moment to prepare your hearts. As we hear these words from scripture, which we can trust. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks as we give thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his followers saying, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. We share the bread together. The body of Christ is broken for us. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. The body of Christ is broken for us. Amen. In the same way, after the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Christ shed for you Thanks be to God. I think she's going to stay asleep, so I can go to sleep. Uh-huh. Almighty God, <clears throat> we thank you and praise you for these ordinary earthly things, for they remind us that you have come and touched our earth and that you are the redeemer, the one who can set us free to live lives that display your fullness, your blessing and your glory. So though Lord, we are scattered already, fill us that we may also scatter your love wherever you lead us as we learn to daily feed on you, Lord, as we learn our need to be washed and refreshed, cleansed of our sin, in order that we may be clothed in Christ to serve you. Amen. Amen. We've gone a little bit long for um, for Zoom. Uh, apologies for that. I got carried away in uh, doing the sermon live. We're going to close with a wonderful hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. I'm not sure of the quality of this hymn. It's taken off YouTube from the BBC. Um, but for those of you with a Welsh bent who think I might be bitter about last week, uh, just wait till the end and you'll see I'm very gracious in defeat. Uh, So we sing of the victory of Christ, actually. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
En edariad dai, I will ever give to you praises, praises. Wasn't it good to see a church full of people? I wonder if you're really, really hungry for that. To be honest with you, if you are, and if you think it's time for you that you'd be prepared to, to come back for church, if you could send a, an email to the office so that we begin to know who's beginning to get ready. We could be open for 30 at the moment, and we don't know what's going to happen next. But if you think, I've had my vaccine, it's three weeks after it, and I'm, I just want to be back together, socially distanced, with masks, not allowed to sing yet, let us know and we will see how we, we, we rightly respond. We will carry on on Zoom, I think, for a long time yet. So, Lord, I pray your blessing, your peace and your love to each one of us. We have different ways of knowing the way forward, but I pray that you will walk with each of us, that as we are blessed with your presence, we may in turn touch the world with the blessing of love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. I think um, uh, I will turn off my spotlight and we'll go into gallery view. You can unmute yourself.